Dawson Rider the team. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the 5 inch Power Rangers Operation Overdrive figures, or roughly 5 inch, they're kind of in between like 5 and 6. But anyway, uh, so as you can see here, there's only 4, I'm missing blue, I don't know where he went to. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet, I didn't even know I rhymed those words. Uh, but, uh, it bothered me, like, after having not, no figures for Ninja Storm, not having a review for Overdrive for the figures, since I was so close, but, so I apologize about that, but I remember what he's like, he's basically the same as black and red, except blue with his different helmet. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start with these. Um, I'm basically gonna, I'm basically gonna slip into an accent. No, I'm basically going to go over the articulation for one of each base mold. So like for this one, the male, damn it, Will. Okay, so this is the base male mold. And as you can see, it has the typical sort of um, Power Rangers figures of muscliness. That was some great English there. Anyway, um, the reason I, I pointed out specifically this time is because if you collected or have been watching these videos or in any way aware of all these 5-inch figures, is that as time progressed they got sort of stuck in this tradition of being overly muscly. And for some reason the Overdrive ones stick out. I mean, if I did some sort of scientific comparison uh, to like uh, Mystic Force that came right before it, maybe it's the exact same, but because you know, they did have muscles on the Mystic Force figures, but for some reason it really stands out in these. Maybe it's also because the Jungle Fury ones that come after this um, actually streamlined it to looking more like what the Rangers look like, but usually I'm not one to complain about that, but I just, it really does stand out here. Detail-wise, they basically get all you need. I think the head sculpt on him looks pretty good. It's funny because uh, often I'll talk about the helmet proportions and the helmet proportions are correct but then the body proportions sort of make it seem off. But all the colors on it are fine. Uh, there is no paint here because of the feature which doesn't work anymore on this of this lighting up. Um, when you press the belt here, so there's you don't get any details there, which is kind of disappointing. As for what he comes with, they all basically came with the two modes, I believe. I think they both came with two, or at least these uh, of their main weapons, or their main sidearms, excuse me. And then they, if you can see back there on, on Black Ranger, which we'll get to in a minute, they also didn't come with the weapon that was actually from the show. It's like almost some sort of weird riff on it. I don't know where they went, but like I said with these reviews, sometimes I'm missing stuff because of storage, so I apologize about missing that. Uh, but articulate Articulation-wise, this guy is pretty solid. You have a really nice hinge joint here. You can move in and out there. Some good 360 action. Single elbow joint here. There's actually a really nice ball joint on his leg here, which I feel like is a precursor to Jungle Fury's mold, which had some really nice ball joints on it. Same thing with RPMs. Uh, double knee joint here. You can swivel. Uh, you can move his head around. No up and down, just sideways and all that. Um, but yes, pretty solid articulation. He's just a bit of a a muscly guy, um, and like I said, it, it probably stands out because Mystic Force, something about it, maybe it's the design, made it seem less so, and then Jungle Fury and RPM actually fixed it, but yeah. Okay, so the girl's mold does not suffer from that problem, it's actually a pretty solid mold. They did, damn it man, everyone's just, they're phoning it in today, um, but they did decide to go with the version where they just sort of... Uh, make a hard mold of the skirt pieces on each individual leg, almost making them like short shorts, as opposed to, um, again, Jungle Fury next decided to do a full-on skirt piece, but it does allow them to have more movement. They don't have the nice ball joint there, but they do have a good hinge joint here that uh, gets the job done for basically the same articulation that you would need. Um, the arms are also the same in terms of that, uh, what you get then and out side to side, uh, double elbow joint, or single elbow joint, sorry, I'm used to saying that from figure arts, and the head moves and all that stuff, but because she does have the overly muscly fideness. Uh, that's a huge technical term. Don't use that in a, a casual setting. Uh, they actually are pretty nice figures. Uh, very pro well proportioned. As you can see, she's got her weapon here. They did not have any electronic features or anything like that. So you actually, oh, that's awkward. You actually have, you know, the painted symbol on there. Um, since Will's taking a cat nap, we'll just take a look at yellow. Same articulation and all that, but nice figure. I think that the girls' figures for overdrive are actually pretty nice since they don't have to deal with that. That muscly shenanigans, hashtag muscly shenanigans, hashtag time remnant shenanigans. Okay, Mac, let's just have you stand there. Okay, so here's a Black Ranger figure. Again, same articulation, no paint here. See, he comes with, like, it's kind of bent because I had him posed with this and then he got put away for a while, but it's like, it's almost like a double-sided hammer. And, you know, he's got the drive slammer weapon, which is sort of like a hammer. Um, so... And I think that his sort of looked like a drive lance. I can't remember what blues looked like, but like I said, they were almost like a riff on the weapons. Or like if they didn't have the licensing to it and they were bootlegs, I don't know. It was real weird uh, what they decided to do with these. Um, but overall, 
I feel like this one more than any others is where it becomes a weird sort of final verdict or recommendation because, dear God, man, I'm going to hurt someone's feelings. Um, because I, I talk about a lot in these reviews how sometimes these figures don't hold up to today's standards uh, overall figure-wise and PR figure-wise, but I personally like to collect them because it's sort of like a, a neat, like, collectible part of history to see all the five inch figures from the years and like that was like one of the most exciting parts about a series starting is like the five inch figures were one of the first things you get before the series even comes out so they're sort of like this special thing um so i like to collect them regardless of how their molds and stuff um vary so i can recommend it for those type of people if you're like me and you just like to have the five inch figures from each series then go ahead but i would say that these with the exception of the girls which are pretty solid figures i have to say i think that these regular five inch releases are definitely one of the weaker ones between the muscle being a little bit more noticeable um the weird riff weapons which i don't mind when they come with unique stuff but it just seems odd maybe include it in a different release or include both and then uh the light up feature just I don't know, I would have rather them had the light-up feature come from the headlights, like on the show, instead of taking away from the paint, because it just seems so apparent. So yeah, um, if you're in, like, into, uh, if you're into stuttering like me, just, you're, you're at home right here. No, but if you're into old releases like this, I can recommend it. Otherwise, in terms of other 5-inch figures of the past, there are definitely other sets I could recommend more. But anyway, until next time, make sure to check out the crazy podcast at writersrangerambles.com, and of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Dawson Writer, signing out.